Let me start first a little bit with the pathophysiology of TSC, and then we, it kind of relates to what you should be looking for as a clinician. So tuberous sclerosis complex is a genetic disorder, and it's caused by mutations either in the TSC1 or the TSC2 gene. And mutations in this gene lead to overactivation of what we call the mTOR signaling pathway. Now that pathway is important because more recently, or for some time now, we're starting to develop medications that can target that pathway. But overactivation of that pathway leads to loss of control over cell growth and cell division, which is why we see many of the manifestations of pa that patients have with tuberous sclerosis complex, which is development of what we call non-malignant or benign growths, um, often termed tubers in the brain, but this can occur in the skin, the eyes, the kidneys, the heart, the lungs, the liver, so it's grossly manifested throughout the body. Now, things to look for as a clinician um, are actually quite evident in tuberous sclerosis complex because it's also known as a neurocutaneous syndrome. So you have neurologic syndromes, but you have cutaneous or skin findings. So often things that you can see secondary to this overactivation and this overgrowth. So things that you can see on these patients are hypomelanotic macules. So these are light patched macules throughout the body. You can also see angiofibromas on the face over generally in this distribution. Um, you can also see something called a chagrin patch as well. And I really encourage clinicians to look up some of these things because there's a vast amount of information and photos of this to help identify these on individuals with tuberous sclerosis complex. But even what's more important with TSC is because of these growths, we can identify this disorder at a very young age, even in utero. So with fetal ultrasounds or regular ultrasounds, you can identify the cardiac rhabdomyomas or the growths in the heart. And if there's concern for that, you can then do a fetal MRI to see these growths in the brain as well. And some of these growths in the brain are called cortical tubers or subependymal nodules or giant cell astrocytomas, and those are growths in the brain which lead to what we see causing epilepsy in, in children 